Good evening, everyone. My name is Vernicia Jones, and I am the president of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. And we believe that we are the solution to the violence in our community. West Garfield Park Youth Council is comprised of 30 youth who has increasingly grown since last season. West Garfield Park Youth Council is sponsored by Fathers Who Care, which is a nonprofit organization located on the west side of Chicago within the West Garfield Park community. Again, everyone, my name is Vernicia Jones, and I am the president of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. We invite people from all over to come and see what we're about. We meet every Monday at 430 to 630 at 4540 West Washington, and you can contact us at 773-287-5821. Again, that number is 773-287-5821-4540 West Washington. Our show will be scheduled every Thursday at 7 p.m., Again, that is every Thursday at 7 p.m. We would like to encourage calls from people watching to leave their questions and comments at 312-738-1060. Again, that number is 312-738-1060. Our phone lines are open. Our show can also be viewed online at www.cantv.org backslash live. Again, that is www.cantv.org backslash live. Well, everyone, I know you noticed this beautiful young lady sitting beside of me. Instead of me introducing her, I will allow her to introduce herself. Good evening, everybody. My name is Marla Skinner. I am the Director of Operations for Senator Kimberly A. Lightford, who is the Assistant Majority Leader for the 4th Senate District. I've been invited here by uh, Reverend Jones, Fathers Who Care, and the West Side Garfield uh, Youth Council. So I'm glad to be here, and again, thank you for that invitation. Thank you, Marla, for being a guest on tonight's show. Again, everyone, my name is Bernicia Jones. I'm the president of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. I'm 19 years old. Well, going to be 20. Um, I'm currently in college, currently working, and currently being a voice in the youth in our youth community. And you are watching a live interactive calling television show brought to you by Can TV 21. So basically, during the next 25 minutes, we're going to discuss the senator. <laughs> we're going to discuss what's going on in the state of Illinois, what state we are in in the state of Illinois, and like basically what we can do and what's coming up, what's new. Okay? Okay. So basically, today's topic is about the, talking about what's going on in the state of Illinois and what's happening with us young people, why, why you doing what you're doing for the young people, and everything else. So who is Kimberly, to start off, who is Senator Kimberly Lightford? Senator Kimberly Lightford is the senator for the 4th District. She's the assistant majority leader, and she's been the senator for the last 18 years. She's also the chairman for the Illinois Legislative Black Caucus. Okay, this evening we're here to discuss how we can challenge more young people to become more active in community organizing and civic engagement via bridging the intergenerational gap in, in reducing senseless violence, underage drinking, and substance abuse on the west side of Chicago. So how do you feel about that? I feel like it's a very, uh, it's a state of emergency for our uh, communities, for our youth especially, and it's a Regrettably, an issue and challenge that we are all facing, and we, we want a solution to it. I want to be a part of the solution, and being part of that solution is doing and promoting programs and initiatives that um, support the community and the needs of the community. Okay, so tell us why you're so passionate. Why is the senator so passionate in being, like, being so passionate in, the, in being a state senator for the 4th? District. Senator Lightford is so passionate um, and has been called by the community as the champion for education. Uh, she's a champion for education from kindergarten through college, believing that education is the key to success. If you are regrettably in a poverty environment, um, education can be your out. It can be traditional education, non-traditional education, which would be career tracks, and trainings that can give you education to give you that leverage to not have to be um, unsuccessful or not let your circumstances dictate your outcome or your success. So what is civic engagement? Civic engagement is um, being involved, being a voter, 
becoming knowledgeable on the elected officials and the process and the needs of the community. Um, civic engagement starts, you know, with young people. The West Side Garfield Park Youth Council is a perfect example of civic engagement. What you're doing here, um, Vernicia, and the young people that support and are um, active participants in that group, that's civic engagement. You're speaking up for the violence. You're speaking up for the underage drinking. That's becoming civically engaged, advocating for um, the process to be the right process. Okay. We would like to encourage calls from people watching to call in with your questions and comments if you have any questions about what she's saying or any questions about what I got, anything about a young person. Um, you could call in at 312-738-1060. Again, that number is 312-738-1060. Call in with your questions and comments. Why should young people be more actively involved in the voting process? Like, why, why is it so important for young people to vote? Um, again, speaking on behalf of Senator Lifer, it's, it's um, very important. We came from a time where our ancestors did not have the process that we have of going in to vote. So it's part of our history. It's part of us again, taking the initiative to not just be in a community, but be an active part of that community. Mm -hmm. Be the positive change that we so desperately say we need and want. Um, the whole idea of being the example of what you want to see the young people um, look up to. If we want change, if we want them to change, you we have to, have do, to um, do something about it. You're absolutely right. We have to show them what we want them to do, be that example, that mentor for that process. And it starts with voting. Voting for legislators that um, are passionate about the needs of the community, the things that are needed. Basic necessities is what we're up against now. Okay, and I see we have a caller. We can take that first caller. Can TV question or comment? I have a um, comment for the guest on the show. The topic of the show is educating our youth for the future. Is that it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. One, well, I think, and you, you can tell me what you feel about it, I think that one of the ways that we can educate, you know, our leaders for the future is, for one, going back to the way we used to be when Schools were important when it was important to have, you know, these different after-school programs and these different programs that was involving our students and making them feel important and giving them a reason to want to be somebody in life as they grow up. Because now, our children nowadays just really don't care because they get the impression that we don't care. We as adults don't care about them and don't care about where they're going in, in, in their life, you know, and, and, and I, I think that that's one of the reasons, that's one of the things that need to be done. We need to bring back what has been taken away from our children and from our schools in order to reach our children. And, and I just want to hear what you got to say about that, okay? Okay. Well, thank you for calling in with the comment. It's an excellent point. Okay. Um, old okay. days, if you will, that's the term I'll use. Uh, I agree. The teachers um, have to, as well as the parents, they have to be involved. School in the earlier times, it was a team effort. It was the parents engaged, the students, as well as the administration and the teachers. And regrettably, that's not always the teamwork that we see now um, for various reasons. But I agree with you that that's something that needs to be brought back. And I see we have another caller, so we can take this caller. Yes, good evening. This is this is Miss Griffin, and you're sitting beside a very fine, distinguished young lady. The West Side is the best side, and I'm saying this to join what you're saying, due to the fact that we no longer have historical things in our school. I noticed this past election, going to different polling places, the young people were being accomplished with accomplished their, their parents. So what we need to do now is get a chance to when it, okay, can you hear me? Yeah. So whenever we have an election coming up
You can finish talking. We need to go to a polling place and take the kids and let them see the process. And as they become old enough to register to vote, like they did this last time, take the kids to these places so they can see the mechanism of how the success gets started with doing the things. And you continue to work good with those young people over on the west side, the best side, and we will be achievers. Thank you much. Thank you. So do you have anything to say back on what she said? I agree with her. Um, I actually am a proud parent who took my son for the first time. This was his first time to vote, and it was a big deal to me. I talked about it months before. I talked about it to his friends, and it was a great process. I took my son, and I totally agree. It's a process we need to engage the youth in. Next caller. Question or comment? I have a question. Yes. My question is for the um, guest today. My question is, what activities are being done to support and help our young people, mainly the new generation? So basically, what activities do you got coming up that's here to help us, like build us? A couple of initiatives that Senator a life for per se. Thank you, caller, for calling in with your question. Uh, Senator Lifer has a free tutoring program. She's partnered with Black Star Project, and it's uh, fifth through eighth graders. They have uh, free tutoring for 10 weeks per semester. The first day is an assessment to see where they are and what the need is. The goal is to get those students high school ready so that you won't have um, a student who becomes bored or unengaged easily for a dropout. So that's one of the initiatives that she offers. Um, she also does mentoring workshops in suburban and Chicago elementary schools in her district. Mm -hmm. I so, see we have a you finished? So those are two of the initiatives that Senator Lifer supports as it relates to the youth. Also she supports churches and organizations that offer after school programs and youth councils such as Westside Garfield uh, Youth Council, she supports those initiatives. So I see we have another caller. Question or comment? You're getting a lot of callers today. <laughs> Question or comment? Uh, sure. I, I heard the young, lady, the young lady mention about underage drinking. I'm 73 years old. I have driven from Austin all the way to the Loop. And and I have seen underage drinking in front of these stores, these liquor stores, quite a few of it going on. And I feel that the liquor stores, they are the, one of the big aggressors for the kids to be out here drinking in front of the liquor stores. And older people, I've seen them going into the liquor stores buying the alcohol for the younger people. For the younger people. And uh, when you get so far down, when you get almost to the loop, you don't see any liquor stores. Why they have liquor stores in the black neighborhoods? I mean, they could be moved like they move a lot of them out here on North Avenue, out here by where I live, by Oak Park. You don't see no liquor stores. Thank so this is what, okay, thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Carla, for calling in with that comment. Um, I agree with you. There are a lot of liquor stores in the community and your point needs to I would say be raised with those um, legislators as well as other community constituents need to support you in the efforts um, in regards to liquor stores being in the community. Okay so how can we identify and address the mental health and substance abuse needs? Well I see we have another caller. <laughs> Question or comment? Hello caller. Question or comment? Uh, how to educate and enlighten our future leaders. Can, she repeat it? Can you repeat your question? Hello? Okay. So how can we identify and address the mental health and or substance abuse needs among our people? Uh, thank you. <laughs> That's a challenging question, necessary question. And it's not a uh, general or just a one answer to that question. Uh, mental health is a serious uh, challenge in our community. 
And I think we start with um, the stigma. We all mm -hmm. have said freely, oh, she crazy, or that's my uncle, they cray cray, as the young people say. We've said it with ease and just freely. It's, it's not freely, it's, it's serious, and it's a circumstance or uh, illness that I think holistically we all need to take an active role in it. Um, Senator Lightford, as well as uh, about, hmm, I'm going to say maybe 20 um, mental health and social service uh, organizations partnered together to uh, do just that. Um, Senate Bill 565 is um, legislation that deals with mental health, and it begins with starting with our youth and trying to address it at an early age so that you don't have some of the circumstances we see, you know, with older people with mental health. I see we have another caller. Question or comment? Hello? Caller, question or comment? Yes, I have a comment. I think that you can, you can enlighten our future leaders by showing positive energy and focusing on them as you would someone that is already develop, like treat them the same way that you would someone that's already um, in in the um, industry or whatever, and showing them that you care. Okay. okay. Thank you for that uh, comment. Okay. So what is the state of the state of Illinois? Another difficult question, <laughs> Bernisha. Thank you for challenging me this evening. Um, the state of the state of Illinois, uh, we currently know that violence is on the rise, uh, regrettably. And I think there are a lot of initiatives and organizations still combating that um, challenge. We don't want to continue to see young people, you know, death at the hands of violence. And regrettably, the state of Illinois has a temporary budget until December 31st. Um, Senator Lightford all year and in her 18-year tender has been um, an advocate of seeing programs, organizations, um, resources for our community, specifically the youth. Again, you know, the West Side Youth Council is an example of organizations that we need across the board where youth are engaged and involved. Um, but regrettably, the state, you know, budget is temporary until December 31st, 2016. And Senator Lightford, as well as her colleagues, will continue to work hard at getting a budget in place that continues to have those existing programs that we've been familiar with um, in prior years that promote, you know, after school programs, that promote youth employment, that promote um, iLeap services for seniors you know, medical issues for seniors, food on our table. So she's going to continue that fight. And I love how you um always talking about our youth council like that. I think that's the way that helps you, like, do more than what they're doing when they see that they have people that's actually paying attention to what they're doing and actually motivate, like, old, like more mature people actually motivating what we're doing in the community. Well, if I could, uh, Ranisha, I've had the pleasure of working with you um, professionally. Um, when we had a back-to-school event several years ago, you and some of your uh, colleagues came and helped us put those 800 book bags that together. year <laughs> together. So um, yeah. I'm an advocate for youth, the summer initiatives that supported having youth interns in our office. I learned a great deal from the youth. I would like to think I made an impact, you know, on their lives as well. It was an exchange of a learning opportunity. It was that process of teaching them how to be civically engaged, how to be community organizers, how to be in the know of what they need to know as they go on this journey of adulthood. So I'm all for that. Um, it was a great experience, and I wholeheartedly support the initiative um, with you and all the other youth. And that's why we need that summer employment. Yes. We need to keep the youth busy so they're not bored and, you know, looking to other things that promote negativity. We need the positivity in the communities. Okay. So what events or resources are available in the 4th Senatorial District? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. 
So Center of the Life for hosts um, eight annual events, and I'll just name those events and give a general statement. Um, our first initiative is in January, actually the end of January, and it goes through um, April, mm -hmm. where it's the 10-week program that I've mentioned previously, the free tutoring program for 5th through 8th graders. Then she hosts the annual Grandparents Raising Grandchildren event that acknowledges grandparents at an event um, with entertainment. Uh, the next initiative will be a breast cancer awareness that she does on Mother's Day with the 4th District Gentleman Committee going into beauty shops on the Saturday before Mother's Day with Loretto and Loyola Hospital promoting breast cancer awareness. We do an opposite event of that for the men for Father's Day, same principle, promoting prostate awareness. Our huge back-to-school event with vendors and um, free book bags, free entry to the zoo. Then our next initiative would be the uh, college fair with the state colleges. And then lastly, the uh, fall semester for the Saturday University. The uh, fall is uh, 10 semesters of free tutoring for 5th through 8th grade. So that was just a brief synopsis. I encourage anybody to call the office for more details about those um, events. Okay, we can take this last caller. Question or comment? Uh, yes. Question or comment? Yeah, this is a comment. I just, I know that you all are located on the west side. So I wanted to know, have you all ever visited any teen shelters or uh, or or like uh, like shelters or like TLPs for youth on the west side? I mean, so probably they would know or you could, you know, help assist those teens that may be in need. Actually, it's, it's good that you brought that up. Um, every Christmas Eve, our youth council go out and we go to different shelters, um, grown-up shelters and also kids' shelters, men's shelters, women's shelters. And we, like, sing Christmas carols, give out different fruit baskets, give out gifts to the kids just to show them that we care. We also go to, like, the detention center for teens, for mm -hmm. young guys or whatever. Where we go and we talk to them. They have the different people come out singing to them, basically to let people know that it's still somebody there that care about them. So it's like it's good that he brought that up because we actually got that coming up for New Year's Eve. That I mean for Christmas Eve that we do every year. We've been doing for the last five six years. Okay, well I think that was a great uh, comment and suggestion. I noted that <clears throat> for um, our office to consider that in some shape, form, or fashion, if um, that's determined that is something we would do. But I think it's an excellent point. Personally, I've done it um, with my family. And all of the events that Center the Life for hosts also give an opportunity for us to let the community know that we're there for them, that we offer resources, and that our office is a place um, to call and connect with, keeping you civically engaged, if you will. Well, everyone, again, this is the West Garfield Park Youth Council. We meet every Monday at 430 to 630 at 4540 West Washington, and you can Call us at 773-287-5821. Again, the number is 773-287-5821. And you can call us about any information or just to come out to see what we're all about. So do you have any last comments that you want to tell our audience? I do. I want to thank um, Reverend Jones and I want to thank you, Vernicia, um, for the invitation. I want to thank you for the work that you do. And also, I'm um, extending the invitation to Senator Lifer to come on the show and talk about what we do and keep the community engaged. Um, our office uh, number is 708-343-7444, and we're located in Westchester, Illinois, and we are here for the 4th District constituents. Okay, we can take this last caller. Hi, I have a comment. Um, I was just saying that you guys do an excellent job on this show every Thursday, and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> well, everyone, if you're just now tuning in, our guest tonight on the show is Miss Marla Skinner, and we are discussing the topic of 
what the state of Illinois is in and how to help our youth in the communities. We would like to thank our viewers for watching and calling in. For additional information about our youth council or anything that's going on in the community, you can call us at 773-287-5821. Again, that is 773-287-5821. And if you will have any information about the senator, you can call us and also get information about her. Thank you for watching and tune in next week.